All right, thanks for watching. And today I wanna cover one of the two main fundamental theorems of calculus, or I guess fundamental theorem of calculi for surface integrals. The first one is easier to use and I think more important. It's called the divergence theorem. And it just says the following. It says that if you take the surface integral of a vector field over a surface, and suppose the surface, it's like a closed surface that encloses some region E. Then it turns out it's much easier to calculate that surface integral. It just becomes the triple integral over the region of the divergence of the uh, vector field. In other words, dy dy. In other words, you're taking a very complicated surface integral and turning it into a triple integral, which is easier, of an even easier function. Um, and let me first of all explain why this makes sense, because, so again, suppose you have a surface and that encloses a region E. What is the divergence? It's basically a number that explains how much your vector field expands. So at every point, you have those little expansions, that's divergent of f, and the idea is if you add up those little expansions, you get the actual expansion of your vector field on your surface, And notice, this is just like saying f dot n, so it's just the same thing as saying f dotted with ds. In other words, if you sum up how f expands at every point, you should get the net flux of f, namely how much of something, a fluid or something, runs out of the vector field. So it sort of makes sense. And of course, it's also uh, just the analog of triple integral of f prime is equal to double integral of f, sort of, strictly speaking. So a triple integral of a derivative becomes a double integral of a function. Okay, hmm. so that was the ex intuitive explanation more or less. Now, let's see how great this is. So, let's calculate Something very complicated. The double integral of f ds, where f is this really complicated vector field, 2x cubed plus y cubed, y cubed plus z cubed, 3y squared z, and s is even more complicated. It's the surface, how can I say it? The surface between the paraboloid, so z equals to 1 minus x squared minus y squared, and the xy plane. Let me explain what I mean. Maybe I wasn't super clear, but. Uh, That's why, that's why the picture is very nice. It's so that we're all on the same page. What I mean is, take this paraboloid, so x, y, z. So z is 1 minus x squared minus y squared. It's like your parabola in calculus that just goes downwards. Something like that z equals to 1 minus x squared minus y squared. And what I mean is the surface, it's the surface of this parabola, but also the bottom part. So if you had to calculate that surface integral, it would be a mess because you would have the, this very complicated vector field. And not only would you have to do that, you would have to 
calculate the surface integral of two parts of that surface. You would have to calculate on this paraboloid, but also on the disk below. So it's very painful, and again, unless you like to torture yourself, I would not recommend to do that. Instead, let's use the divergence theorem. And you'll see it becomes much, much easier. And by the way, when, you do, when do you use the divergence theorem? First of all, when the divergence of your vector field is easy to calculate. And basically the only time you use uh, like, um, the surface integral. So because Stokes' theorem deals with the curl of that, which is not directly f dotted with ds. Here we have f dotted with ds directly. And so what does that tell you? it tells you that the double integral of the surface integral is the triple integral of the divergence. Almost sounds like a burger, like, oh, we don't have the double burger, we have the triple burger. Yum. Okay. <laughs> it's almost dinner time. I should eat. Anyway. And now, I never explain what a divergence is, but it's very easy. It's basically, you take the x derivative of this plus the y derivative of this plus the z derivative of this. So 2x cubed plus y cube x plus y cube plus z cube y plus 3y squared z z dx dy dz. And what's important is the divergence is just a number, so it's not a vector field anymore. Okay, and let's pray that this becomes easier. Well, let's see. Triple integral over e. So this becomes 6x squared plus 3y squared plus 3y squared dx dy dz. And that just becomes... So much easier, this becomes 6y squared, so in the end, 6 times x squared plus y squared dx dy dz. So you see, it becomes much, much easier to calculate, and in fact, here you see x squared plus y squared, so you should think of polar coordinates, except we're in three dimensions, so we have to use cylindrical coordinates which is basically the same thing. I don't understand why they have an extra section on just that, but uh, what do you do? Well, z, again, is between bigger and smaller. Notice the bigger function is 1 minus x squared minus y squared. The smaller function is 0. So z is between 0 and 1 minus x squared minus y squared. Transform this into r, so 1 minus r squared, that's your first bound, so 0, uh, 1 minus r squared. And then notice what is the bound, like, uh, the lower term, well, it, like the lower region, it just becomes a disk of radius 1, and therefore uh, r is between 0 and 1 and theta is between 0 and 2 pi. So if one, your region D is just a disk of radius 1, and you get that from just less setting z equals to 0 in your equation, 1 minus x squared minus y squared. OK, good. And what does that become? So x squared plus y squared, that's just r squared. And lastly, don't forget about your Jacobian r dz dr d theta. And it looks scary, but it simplifies quite nicely. So first of all, there's no theta involved anywhere, so you just multiply by 2 pi, 2 pi integral from 0 to 1. We have our 6r cubed. And this just becomes a constant with respect to z. So you just write it as 
uh, 6r cubed times this minus this, 1 minus r squared, and then just dr. And so you get 2 pi, integral from 0 to 1, 6r cubed minus 6r to the fifth dr, and then you get 2 pi, so 6 fourth r to the fourth minus r to the sixth from 0 to 1, and you get 2 pi times, I think, 3 halves minus 1, and that's uh, 2 pi times 1 half, and that's just delicious pi. Woo! So, you see, I only use one whiteboard for this instead of using, you know, 50,000 whiteboards had I done this, you know, directly. But what happens then is simply the uh, double, the surface integral here just becomes an easier, usually, triple integral, which gives us a nicer way of calculating uh, uh, triple integrals. And, uh, sorry, the surface integrals. Triple integrals, well, it's a bit harder because you have to, you know, write your function as a divergence of a vector field, and in general, there's no nice way of doing this. Uh, so this is nice, and also I think in applications that's very important. So, you know, if you do more math, like PDEs, you use the divergence theorem many, many times. All right, so if you like that and you want to see more math, please make sure to subscribe to my channel. Thank you very much. One more theorem to go. Get stoked. <laughs>